for a long time now I've wanted to experiment with an antenna which I've only just touched upon a few years ago. It's the random wire or N-fed wire, the non-resonant piece of wire. And I thought, I don't know, I'll give it a try because more and more stations I use in this particular antenna now. I've heard all sorts of reports from it. Uh, some say it's great, some say it doesn't work, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. So well, I thought there's only one way to find out whether it works or not, is to try it. Welcome to the Waters and Stanton Ham Radio Channel, presented by Peter Waters. I've used the end fed half wave extensively over the last few years. Uh, I did have a half size G5 V up for about 18 months, and that worked extremely well. But then about six months ago, I replaced it, went back to the end fed half wave. No real reason other than the fact that I thought I'd just re familiarise myself with the end fed half wave, and that worked. Uh, well, it was 20 metres long, so it meant it resonated on its fundamental of 40 metres. Worked on its harmonics of uh, 20, 15 and 10 metres, and it worked well. But I thought, well, it's going to be fairly easy to convert this N-fed half wave to a random length of wire, because looking up on the tables, one of the optimum lengths of wire is 71 or 72 foot long, depending on which table you look at. So I thought, well, I only need to extend my 66 foot wire by about five or six feet to reach 72 feet. And of course, I need to replace my um, 49 to one unun with a nine to one unun. So that's the plan. Now, when I was experimenting with this antenna, I discovered a way of matching it on more bands than I thought I would be able to. I ended up being able to match this antenna on 160 meters, 80 meters, 40 meters, 20, 15 and 10 and the walk bands as well. And a bit later in this video I'll explain how I did it. But it was a method that I'd used many years ago but it just fallen out of favour, I hadn't used it in ages. Anyway, a bit later in this video I'll explain how I achieved this quite remarkable match. Uh, just to let you know that it's the FTX Optima that I've been using for all these tests and we'll come back to this a bit later when I um, attempt to match the antenna on all bands. So let's now talk about a random wire because a random wire antenna is anything but a random wire. There are set lengths of wire which optimize the performance of an N-fed antenna with a 9 to 1 unknown. Let me explain. If you take a quarter length of wire that's resonant on one frequency. Let's for example say that quarter wave length of wire is uh, 10 meters long, which is a quarter wave on uh, 40 meters. In other words, it's 33 foot long. That's a low impedance, and that would actually match a transceiver because transceivers are designed to feed into low impedance antennas. But it only really works on the 7 megahertz band. It will work on the third harmonic, which is 21 megahertz, but beyond that, you've lost the ability to work on a lot of amateur radio bands. It'll only work on 7 and 21 megahertz. If you take a half wavelength of wire, that represents a high impedance on 7 megahertz and all the harmonics. So you've got a high impedance on 7 megahertz, 14, 21 and 28 megahertz. If you use a 49 to 1 unun, that converts that high impedance down to a low impedance, which makes it friendly for your transceiver. But that only gives you the amateur bands 40, 20, 15 and 10. It doesn't give you the walk bands. And also it doesn't give you the lower frequency bands. Now, a random wire antenna is supposedly able to give you more bands. And if you look at the tables on the internet, you'll find that a 71 foot length of wire should give you 160 meters through to 10 meters. The reason it does that is because on those bands, that 71 foot length of wire is a medium impedance. Now a medium impedance is defined as anything between three and four, three and 600 ohms. So if that 71 foot length of wire presents a medium impedance on all those amateur radio bands, and we put a nine to one unun, that will convert that medium impedance down to a low impedance. So in other words, we've got 
length of coax cable going down out into your garden. We've got a nine to one unun, um, and then we've got a 71 foot length of wire from that unun going down to the bottom of the garden. Bear in mind that with these wire antennas, you can bend them around the garden. So you've only got a garden that's 50 foot long. You can go 50 foot down the garden and then 21 foot across the garden. You've still got your 71 foot. I have been using a, uh, an in-fed half wave uh, on 40 meters or 40, a 20 meter long in-fed half wave. And that gives me um, the bands 40, 20, 15, and 10. It doesn't give me the walk bands. It doesn't give me 80 meters or 160 meters. So I thought, well, all I've got to do with my NFED half wave is re remove my 49 to 1 unun at the uh, feed point on the antenna, replace it with a 9 to 1 unun, and extend my antenna by about 5 foot to give me the 71 feet, which is what I did. I must admit that uh, it was with some trepidation and some reservation that I embarked on this exercise because I wasn't totally convinced that it would be a straightforward exercise. The tables that give you lengths of uh, antenna will work. By the way, you can get lengths going up to about uh, 200 feet. Um, I think the shortest length is around about, I don't know, I can't remember what it is now, but it's around about 20, 27 feet, something like that. But of course, as the antenna gets shorter, it's not going to work on the lower frequency bands. But anyway, the 71 foot length of wire should work on 160 through to 10 meters, according to the pundits. But there is one um, precaution or one, one warning, and that is that you seem to need to have a fairly long length of coax cable. My coax cable length from my uh, operating room down to the uh, beginning of the antenna is 40, about 40 feet of coax, RG58, which works, works fine. But I thought, well, I wonder if that's going to be long enough, because a lot of the coax lengths they recommend are somewhat longer than that. Anyway. I erected the antenna and I got very good results on 14 through to 28 megahertz. The VSWR was always below 3 to 1 and it was hovering around about 2 to 1 on, uh, on some of the bands. Uh, even better, I think, on 21 megahertz. So I was very pleased, but I was a bit surprised it wouldn't work on 40 meters. Now, the VSWR on 40 meters was hovering around 3 to 1. And now, I take the point that that is fairly high VSWR by a lot of people's standards, but really and truly, three to one should 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 work. But with the FTX one Optima, it didn't work. The it just wouldn't match uh, the internal antenna tuner. Wouldn't match the the, the antenna on forty meters. So I decided, well, let's try increasing the length of coax, which is something we used to do in the old days if we had problems in matching. And I increased the length of coax by 25 feet. I simply had 25 feet of coax, which I put on the floor uh, in series with the coax feeder. And lo and behold, with the extra length of coax cable, I got a match on 40 meters. And it didn't affect the matching on the other bands. So the recommendation about coax length seems to have some validity. Um, it, as, far, as far as I was concerned at this point, it wasn't really scientific, but it worked and it got me on 40 meters through to 10 meters, including the warp bands, with a 71 foot length of wire. And I was very happy with that. Many ham radio operators spend a lot of time pondering over whether something will work or not. And very often the best way to find out whether something works is to try it out, which is what I've been doing with this particular antenna. Now I'm going to put up on the screen now the VSWR curve of my NFED half wave before I uh, disconnected it and you can see that there's very definite resonant points they are either on or very close to the ham radio bands 40 20 15 and 10 and probably a curve that you're familiar with now let's take a look at similar set of readings taken from the 9 to 1 unun and here you'll see that uh, it's less defined but there are definite dips and the dips near the bottom of the graph are where the impedance is about 450 ohms. In other words, a medium impedance. That's what the 9 to 1 unun aims for, converting 450 ohms to 50 ohms to match a transceiver. Well, it's not a very precise science, and these dips do uh, mark the 450 ohm line, or the 450 ohm impedance point. But even if the VSWR rises to around about 2 or 3 to 1. It doesn't really matter that much because, 
almost certainly the internal antenna matching unit of your transceiver is going to match it. But now look at the left hand side. You'll see there's a definite rise. The left hand side is the low frequencies, uh, particularly 80 meters and 160 meters. And you'll see that the VSWR rises quite dramatically. And the reason for that almost certainly is that the impedance, for example, on 80 meters is just a little beyond a quarter wave, which is a very low impedance. And on 160 meters, it's well below a quarter wave, which again is a low impedance. So if you have a low impedance and you try and feed it with an anon, which effectively tries to create an even lower impedance, you get a very high VSWR. So the point is that on the left-hand side of this spectrum, where the impedances go very low, they go far, far below 450 ohms, and therefore you get a high VSWR. The losses on the lower frequency bands with a, with a modest VSWR is very small indeed. So I thought, well, if I could somehow feed power into that antenna, even at a 4 to 1 VSWR on 80 meters and 160 meters, I should work. it should work. And then I suddenly remembered something that uh, we used to do in the old days, or something we used to have in the old days. In the old days, we used to have valve transmitters or valve transceivers, and they all had a Pi network. Now, a Pi network is basically a matching network inside the, the transceiver or the transmitter. And it's got quite a wide capability. And in fact, the, all the modern auto ATUs form either a, a, a modification of a Pi network or an L network. Either way, I knew that a Pi network had great capability. Now, I've got a, an Acon amplifier, Acon 1010 amplifier, which is rated up to 700 watts. It's a valve amplifier. And because it's a valve amplifier, it's got a Pi network. And I thought, what happens if I put my linear amplifier in circuit, in, in, well, in series with the uh, Optima? So I fed the Optima at, say, 15 watts, and I would get around about 100, 120 watts out on 80 and 160 meters. I know there's a power limitation on 160 meters, but you, you get the idea. Put a, uh, an amplifier in series, and I've got the advantage of a Pi network. So I tried that, and I was absolutely amazed. There was no problem whatsoever in delivering power to that antenna on 80 meters and 160 meters. It was so simple. I would then had an antenna which covered 160 meters through to 10 meters. Now, I know a lot of you don't have amplifiers, but it is perhaps a lesson or a warning that if you're thinking about getting a linear amplifier, don't write off the old valve amplifiers because they have a built-in antenna matching unit in the form of a Pi network. The solid state amplifiers are great. Switch them on, they're ready to go. You don't have to, do any, well, well, uh, don't have to worry about tuning, provided they're seeing a low impedance. But with a random wire antenna, you're not going to see a low impedance. You're going to see a sort of a uh, impedance goes up and down a bit. Certainly the VSWR is going to go up and down a bit. If you get a valve amplifier, the chances are you'll be able to get on bands that you couldn't otherwise get on. Now the downside of a valve amplifier, as I've explained before, it takes about three or four minutes to warm up before it's ready to operate, and it means you've got to change, you've got to adjust the tuning band by band. But the advantage that it has in terms of delivering power to a random wire antenna it's indisputable. I was quite pleased. I now had an antenna that would cover 160 meters through to 10 meters. That was great. Oh, and by the way, the internal antenna matcher on the Optima also matches the antenna on the 60 meter band. Now I used to enjoy 160 meters and I had reservations about 71 foot of wire radiating efficiently even though I was delivering power to it. But I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I went down the bottom of the band so there was a CW contest on and I worked Czechoslovakia, um, Poland, uh, Italy and Sweden in daylight on 160 meters. That was on CW. But it was working. And then I had some contacts on SSB. And uh, I worked a station in Aberdeen, got 5.8 to 5.9. I worked a station on the Isle of Wight, um, got 5.9 there. Isle of Wight, I guess, is about 150 miles from here. I don't know, something like that, 100, 150 miles. Uh, Aberdeen in a straight line is about 350 miles. 
And uh, I was working stations with ease on 160 meters. So I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't really think that my 70 foot length of wire, or 71 foot length of wire was gonna be that good, but it certainly was. And on 80 meters, again, no problem. I was working all over the UK on 80 meters on, on SSB. Again, the, the antenna is short, although it's not that short because it's just over a quarter wave length of wire on 80 meters, so the high current point is just out in the open there. But I got an antenna system that covered 160 through to 10 meters. And with a bit of jiggery pokery by extending the coax cable, by using an amplifier, I was able to get on all the bands. Now, if you don't have a linear amplifier, then probably uh, an external antenna matching unit will do the job. You don't have to buy a linear to get the, get the versatility of an antenna. But I was pleasantly surprised that with a simple length of wire and a nine to one unun, I got a, a wire that would work on all bands, 160 through 10 meters. And to, to be honest with you, it was quite enjoyable to get on 160 meters and have a chat with a few guys that I wouldn't have otherwise worked because there's, there are a number of hams that are on 160 meters and 80 meters that don't venture on our up. And uh, same so on 80 meters, it was great to make some contacts. So there we are, it's a versatile antenna. Uh, have a good time, good afternoon. Enjoy the yaxing. I'll see you again, Peter. Whenever you hear me, give me another call. G3, Oscar Juliet, Victoria, Oscar Hotel 6 Radio, Mike. So in summary, how would I rate the antenna? Well, it does need a bit of adjustment. Um, I think if you're going to put a random wire antenna up, you've got to be prepared to do some adjustments. Uh, I did find that if I lengthened the antenna beyond 71 feet, if I lengthened it by about five or six feet, I could get a match on 40 meters. It did affect the other bands a bit. So I went back to the, the sort of magic length of 71 feet. When I say magic length, there are other lengths. I think the next length is 111 feet. If you go onto the internet, you'll find these, these lengths. But in summary, I think, I think I might keep it up for a period of time because it is nice to be operated on all those bands. Yes, I had to increase the coax length. Yes, I had to put the amplifier in for, for 80 and 160 meters. If I didn't have an amplifier, I'd, put, I'd probably get a, an antenna matching unit, an external one. Um, but I, I want to do some more tests on this and probably I'll come back to you on this antenna um, in, in the near future. But in the meantime, have a think about it. I was pleasantly surprised. And I'm actually quite enjoying it. There we are. Thanks for watching this video. As usual, I appreciate your support on this channel. Don't forget that whatever you want in terms of ham radio, we've got it on, the, uh, on our website or we've got it at the shop. You can pick up the phone or you can send us an email or you can order direct on the website. We've always got deals on that website. Um, don't forget, Yesu got a cash back at the moment. Um, if you're interested in a Yesu HF transceiver, there's, there's cash back deals. Um, you, can get, you can save £85 on some of the models. My favourite um, model is the Yesu FT710. That is a phenomenal transceiver. It's right at the top of the Sherwood Engineering Reports, and it's one of the cheapest HF transceivers. The receiver performance is great. So if you're in the market for a new HF transceiver, have a look at the ASO FT710. If you want to go portable, um, take a look at the FTX1 field. Um, I've got the Optima, so I've, I've used it both as a field transmitter and as a, a, a base station. Uh, it works great, and it's, it's great, of course, you've got uh, two meters and 70 sems, and you can buy the remote lead, which means to say that you can just have the head unit on the desk and the power supply and the amplifier tucked away. So you've got a very, very small presentation on the desk there um, of a, a transceiver that goes 160 meters through to, to, to meet, uh, 270 cents. There we are. Enjoy your hand radio. You take care. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.